guys, welcome back to We Watch Moving. I'm Mike. I'm Jay. And another Patreon review, and this one gets me all excited in the tit sandwiches. Not even a little bit. Here on Patreon, where if you guys want us to review a movie, you can go to that tier, you can subscribe to it, and you can pick a movie for us to review, uh, one for every month that you're actually in the Patreon. So Joshua Gray has picked Hot Tension. What? I don't know if that's how you actually say yeah, it in it's the it's French. Hot. Hey, what tension? Tension. High tension for the rest of us Americans. We just sound like fucking assholes that are on a boat that we're inexperienced. Like it's high tension on I, wire. I call what? it Freedom Fries. He threw a shoe at me. And this is one of those movies, it came out right around that time where DVDs were on that high string of now watch the unrated version where yeah. shit gets really fucked up. And this is one of the few ones where the unrated version was actually worth it because it was deeply fucked up. This movie is nasty, it's gory, it's by Alexander uh, Asha. I heard he was amazing in Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> <laughs> Alexander Asha, who did the Hills Have Eyes remake, which was equally fucked up and depraved. So in this movie, you've got these two girls, they're driving around the countryside, they're French, the movie's in subtitles, but it's one of those movies that- You can deal with it. It's worth it to watch. This mm. is fucked up. You can deal with it, man. This is fucked up, man. Just deal with it. Uh, so they're driving around the countryside, and you can see this one chick clearly is kind of into this other chick. And she's like, why did you sleep with that guy last night? And she's like, I don't know. She's like, you're such a hoe. And then it just goes on. I don't have to bury my face between your legs. What? It was for me, Steven. Look at those traffic lights. Why? I don't know why we sound like fucking <laughs> Swedish people. Do you want to help me with my lambs? Oh yeah, we will slap me both. They're driving through the countryside. This one chick is clearly into this other chick, but they're friends and they're trying to do that whole, let's listen to songs on the radio, but it's a French song, so we don't know what it is. I was jamming out. It was probably uh, Creed, Can You Take Me Higher? <laughs> it probably was. <laughs> They go into this house, and they're staying with this family, and all of a sudden this dude, who's sitting out in a fucking van, and you just see him like, it looks like he has a coconut at first, because he's got this, this head on his dick, and he's like, oh, yeah, oh yeah. And you can hear him grunting and shit, and he's got a severed head that he's forcing to give him head. Oh God. Oh God. And isn't it ironic, don't, don't you think? think? Uh, but, but look, yeah, look, when Pornhub is down and you have no Wi-Fi signal, you use what you have available Jesus. to your hands, and he used a severed head. You know what? I'm not one to judge. You're not one to judge. It's like getting what? head from a severed head. That was the original version. It's a terrible sublime song. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, dude, that, that's when you know you're in for a fucking dark party, is because oh. this dude is out in a van. Making a severed head suck his dick. It's fucked up, and I gotta give you credit. Like, it's gross, and I don't appreciate it or condone it, but fuck yeah, that's some that's some dark horror shit. You I, uh, look, the movie overall is, is, a, is a good slasher flick, for sure. Uh, but as far as the graphic, violent stuff they show, it's done well. I mean, it looks good as shit. But I just, I don't appreciate it. <laughs> I appreciate it. No, I mean, as a, as a person that loves horror movies, I appreciate it, but I don't appreciate... Joshua to fucking recommend this movie because again I think you guys were psychically linked to my nat sack because I was eating fucking spaghetti uh, when I watched this film and it made me sick to my goddamn stomach it really did like I, they were I felt like um, the one lady in Get Out she's like no 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 no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, every time I was like no 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 uh, it just that happened to me when we oh. watched uh, Faces of Death as a kid. Your mom made peanut butter sandwiches. And I was eating peanut butter sandwiches and... Um, and I was so fucking Cheeto disappointed, Puffs. by the way, with this fucking thing. Because not not the movie, but just the, what I thought it was going to be. Mike texted me and said the next Patreon or, or the next review we're going to do is High Tension. And immediately somewhere in my stupid brain that was clouded with alcohol and drugs thought he meant the one with Joseph Gordon-Levitt. With the high wire one. <laughs> And I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to be in for a little vertigo, but it might be an interesting story and something inspirational. And fuck, no, it wasn't. I can't believe you thought that. I really did. You didn't even question it. You were like, oh, yeah, I want to watch well, this. It, you know, because it's called high tension. I was like, and then it's not even high tension, but it sounds like a tension wire and it's high up. So, I don't know what the name of the movie you're talking about is, but uh, yeah, I don't want to watch whatever. it. Whatever. I don't, well, anyway. So, yeah, thanks, Josh. <laughs> uh, but it, it, look, um, I just want to point out the fact that even though I was just fucking grossed out for most of the film. It was still taut 
and atmospheric, and it does build and lend itself to the classic slasher films of the past. It's a good horror movie, man. And the the other thing that it mixes with is there's some M Night Shyamalan bum bum stuff going on yeah. later on. So that's pretty cool. That's that's a unique mix that makes the concoction work. Even if it doesn't check out at the end, but we'll get to that. So this dude's out in a, in a van, fucking getting head from. It's not even a van. It's like a Jeepers Creepers utility truck. It's Being you. It is. <laughs> yeah. He's getting head from a severed head. He goes to this house and he just decides that he's gonna break in and fucking kill some shit. So. He goes in, he starts killing people, and the dad's the first to go. The dad answers the door, and he's just like, with a hammer, he's just like, Huh? Hey! Monsieur, why? And then he fucking kills him, and then not only does he kill him, he takes him up the steps. And guillotines his ass. Oh, God. Guillotines his ass. Ooh, and Randy Savage runs all over you. I saw that shit, dude. I saw Ooh. it coming, dude, because he starts pushing his head through the fucking banisters. And you're like, just get it through there. <laughs> and it was like slow, and you could hear the... The squishy sounds, the, and that, that's another, that was actually genius level right there. They didn't use a lot of music in those scenes because they wanted to make it visceral. And by fucking jolly, by Jove, they did. Because when I was watching it, again, I'm going to go back to get out. No, 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 no. <laughs> like, I was so friggin' like, Jesus Christ. And that was just the beginning of my nightmares. Yeah. Dude, I, I was like, I was like, oh, that's nice. He's not going to kill him. He's just going to leave. But, you know, I, I wanted it to be like one of those things kind of like, after that scene initially happens, because he pushes the guy's <coughs> head through the fucking the, the 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 bars on the banister and uses a bookshelf to decapitate his ass, and I wanted it to be like where I'm laughing at it because I'm just trying to laugh away the pain. I was like, <laughs> it looks so cool. I was like. Oh. <laughs> I had to take a moment to really get myself oriented. I loved it. I like it. loved it. No, but you do. Like I thought. I thought. Oh, that's nice. He's gonna leave it. He's not gonna kill him. It's But then he goes to get the bookshelf, and it's such a big bookshelf. And just the way that they do it, they show him. <laughs> like they don't. They don't leave anything for the mystery of the mind. They don't. JJ Abrams box that mm -hmm. shit. He fuck. He pushes that thing into his head, and you see the whole head go at the awkward angle and fucking go. Me French is canto, me gratos. It's fucking nasty. It suddenly becomes a German film. It looks like a <laughs> skin coconut. <gasps> you throw a mask on this dude, he's fucking Michael Myers. Yeah. The way he moves, he's the Rob Zombie type of Michael Myers, and I was really into that. Like, he had the overalls. If they were just the right color, it was there, and the boots and shit. But. Oh man, he goes up and he finds the mom, and you don't see her die necessarily. Not really, you do. Well, you don't see what happens at first, yeah. you just hear it. And the screams, even the screams that she makes, like in the background, just sounds so gnarly and fucking gross. You know you're in for a treat. But he goes to get her friend, and he, he sees her friend, he's like, oh, she's hot. He's like, I'm gonna take this one home. So he, you know, he bondages her up with some fucking wire, and even the way that he, like, he doesn't just tie her up, he puts this nasty pipe in her mouth, and fucking makes it impossible for her Very to get then he goes up and there's the kid, that, and, and the movie just lets you know that it doesn't give a fuck. Because it even tricks you. The kid runs into the cornfield and you think that they're going to be a little bit decent. And just like, the kid's either going to escape or then you hear the gunshot. I hate fucking kids! <laughs> fuck! You know and the kid dies because you hear the gunshot, but then later on, they even go back to it and show the kid's dead body because they're like, we don't give a fuck anymore. Yeah, again, this is, it doesn't, it, it shows literally everything it can uh, to show and uh, it doesn't hold away it doesn't pull away Jim not ever I, I towards the middle and as we were going through these horrific death scenes and the gruesome way in which he dispatches each person <clears throat> you know a, a song came to me <laughs> it's like I'm still alive but I'm barely breathing <laughs> I was really running out of oxygen and time I was loving it I, no it was cool I just it was making me fucking sick dude I mean because there's one specific scene that really like I almost fucking lost it. I lost the cookies almost at one point. Um, and I, look, there are things that are grosser out there that I've seen, but this thing is just so fucking violent and graphic. But like I've been watching Mortal Kombat 10 X-ray fatalities and shit. Yeah. Achievement unlocked. Seeking therapy the unlocked. Go gore was the gore was on. Fucking top notch, level yeah. ten. The way the mom gets it, he walks up behind her and slits her throat. But he doesn't just slit her throat. 
You hear he pulls her head, he pulls her head back so yeah. that it exposes the wound, and you can hear her go. You can hear like him making every fucking incision, and like not only that, but she's watching through these doors, and again, it's kind of like Halloween because she's hiding in the closet, and the, <laughs> the blood's just spurting on this. Like I'm getting something right now. Like if it was a movie, we would all have hepatitis. I don't uh, want that. It's it's Gnarls Barkley five fucking thousand. It's amazing uh, if you like gore and shit like that. And as far as the slasher goes, the first half of the movie is one of the best slashers out there. It's just so good um but then he starts to stalk around the house right he stalks around the house he never knows that she's there and he goes around and he, he picks up a pic a photo of the girl that he kidnapped and he like he cuts out a picture of her and he's like rubbing it on his face like you know he's gonna fuck he's in it. love you know he's it's, gonna it's a beautiful story he, it's a beautiful moment he's gonna do weird fucking things to her body and with her head you sick inside but there's a lot of decisions she made in this film where like you're fucking stupid you. Like she could have gotten I, away or done something so many times. I would have let you. I mean, I. I, I, I know. I thought I, that. I would have let you way earlier. Like, when I was watching, I thought, "What would Jay do?" The first fucking thing He's I would, I would have jumped out the goddamn window immediately. I know. And then I would have maybe called the cops if I didn't stop somewhere for coffee. I know. I know you would have, Jay. <laughs> but you would have been all right. I was thinking right. of how I would save you in that situation no, you because didn't. I would. You would have saved me in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> she she does go out into the van and he puts he puts her in the van and she's waiting for him and she's standing there and it's these really like intense scenes like it's really suspenseful. That's what, yeah the atmosphere is there. You can really put yourself in her shoes and she's sitting there waiting for him holding the knife waiting for him to come around and she's gonna go for it but he slams the door on her or whatever and he still doesn't know she's in the truck. They go to a gas station. And this is when he just, he's the worst, if he's trying to actually cover his tracks. He's not. He's the worst. For one, you left a fucking severed head full of your fucking ejaculate on the side of a dirt road. If anybody finds that, you're busted fucking immediately. He didn't wear gloves. He put his fingerprints on fucking everything. And then this motherfucker gets drunk, goes to a gas station, is drinking Jack Daniels in the fucking car, right? Goes into the gas station, and then she escapes while he's at the pump. And instead of, like, just doing anything smart... She goes to the gas station. She's like, please call the police. He goes up to come inside. She runs and hides. Come inside. <laughs> he, he knows that she's there, you know, and he fucks with the gas station attendant in this really, really intense scene. Uh, it, it's not as good as uh, No Country for Old Men, but it kind of had those elements. Yeah. When he was in the gas station with the, uh, the gas attendant. I'm not going to tell you a day to come, man. En principe, j'ai pas le droit de la vendre à cette heure-ci. On ira rien au patron, hein, promis, hein. C'est promis. And, and the way that he was kind of going through <laughs> dialogue with him, it, it did because again, like they're really smart about how they and when they use the music. And a lot of the times with the kills, they just left the music out and let the visceralness take you over. You're right. And that was what made it even more intense. And I think I could see people uh, watching this at Cannes or wherever they premiered it, and be like. Fuck this. You know what? I have a fucking mistress to fuck. I don't need this bullshit. I'm gonna do, do cocaine in my Ferrari. I'm gonna do cocaine off a girl's butt and then have her fucking blow it up my nose. Cool. Called booger sugar for a reason. Who wouldn't do that? It sounds awesome. But <laughs> see, <laughs> it sounds amazing. <laughs> Let's just do that now. <laughs> uh, not with each other. No. We'll no, have that does not sound girl cool at all. Her. That sounds like high tension too. Yeah, that's a terrible <laughs> one. So he he kills her and this gas station turns out to be the biggest gas station of all time. It's got like a stadium. It's a, it's a super show. The Knicks play there. <laughs> it's a super show gas station. <laughs> yeah, it's a, they come in during the halftime. It's a no big deal. <laughs> and, uh, but there is a, there is an intensity. Yeah, it's like fucking killer. You're like, God damn, I had to pick the biggest one on the fucking East Coast. I, and it looked like such a piece of shit at first, but it just kept getting deeper. It's one of those Willy Wonka gas stations. The dude from Stir Echoes. Deeper, yeah. deeper, 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 deeper. deeper. Well, uh, <laughs> but yeah. it's like when he goes up and talks to the gas station tenant, it reminded me a little Reggie from uh, Friday the 13th because mm. he was like, You like rubber spiders? <laughs> you like rubber spiders on strings? Okay. Ass to the chest. That's why the light is death. And I was like, Thank you for that. I, I, needed, <laughs> I was eating this meatball. <laughs> so, uh, but, you know, there was still blood pooling around. And then she does see him on the uh, close, you know, the monitors. And then he looks at the camera's like, Let me work. She finally calls the fucking cops. And when she calls him, she gets fucking Barney Fife, and she's like, she doesn't give any goddamn information, and then she gets mad, she's like, I'm at the gas station, he just took my friend! And they're like, what's the, what, what are you gonna ask? What gas station are you at? She's I don't like, understand. I, I, I don't, I, 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 I don't, I don't know what gas station I'm at, and he's like, 
Where is the Wawa Cringe Show? Yeah, <laughs> find out what gas station you're at so we can find her. She's like, he's up down the road, he's gonna kill her. They're like, what fucking gas station are you at, bitch? All you gotta fucking say is the biggest gas station in fucking the world. <laughs> She's like, the she's world. Like, we might just light it on fire. Maybe then you'll find out, you stupid asshole. And it's like, you're yeah. the worst 911 caller fucking all time. Like, yeah. It was. And then she gets a car, she steals the car. Badass car though, I like yeah, car. She chases it. I thought he had a, like one of those little rebel flags. It was a bumblebee. It did have a rebel flag. Yeah, it was just weird because it's France. And I, I, yeah, I doubt the dude at the gas station is the kind of rebel flag carrying guy. Well, not in know? France. It's in fucking France. Yeah. He had the freedom flag. It's in France! <laughs> and you have a rebel flag. It's the weirdest thing. It's a sign or whatever. But anyhow, uh, he eventually notices that she's chasing him and following him down the road and the runs that's way too long. Yeah, he no. did. Runs her off the road, kind of starts crashing his car into her. By the way, there is one specific scene in there. I, I don't know why. I got a six and I, I just thought it was funny personally. I don't know. But it, it's it's disturbing because he, he has he's like he's I swear to god he's one of the, he's like the most typical red, redneck like truck driver ever, but he's like drinking his whiskey as he's driving, which I think is just normal behavior for most truck drivers. Yeah. No offense, but probably. But he's like, he's like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. he's talking to himself, <laughs> like, that hit the spot. <laughs> and then she's behind, and then she's in the cage, and he starts pouring the whiskey on her. Which at that point, if you were a terrified girl with, you know, gagged in the back of a weird van that you thought was an ice cream truck, you... I would just be drinking it. I, I thought that too. I, I was like, like, this might make me relax. But you know what? You know it's pure whiskey, and you know you knew it tasted like shit. Yeah, and it was getting her eyes and stuff. So, and then she's cut, so it's going in the cuts. But That's true. Alcohol is, by the way, when you're like, I would drink it. I don't, I, that really did. That made me sound. <laughs> I thought that too. I, I was, was like, like, I want some. I was like, Thank you, Mr. Raper. I was like, I've got a problem. Uh, but then he, but there is a pretty vicious scene. Like he's lighting the match, and then he's like. Oh. He's like, and he's like, oh, oh, and he's like, oh, and then she's like, oh, he's like, Ugh. he's like, I just want to make sure you're still scared, bitch. You sound like that dude that you said came in uh, in your uh, pharmacy the other day. Oh, like, yeah, oh, yeah. oh, oh, that fucking guy. Oh my god, this dude. All he said, like his word, his mantra was cream circles, cream circles. Supposed to have cream circle flavors. <laughs> That fucking guy. That's what I thought fucking of when he said sickles. that. Cream sickles. Cream fucking sickles. But who the fuck who is it likes cream sickle flavors? <laughs> but anyway, that's like the butterscotch from the fucking dentist. You're like, shit. And I don't know why they'd be giving you suckers in dentists. But anyhow, once they get towards the end, I'm just kind of like, I just fucking come on. Guys. It's cool, but it puts the whole thing in jeopardy in its own way, too. Because you, well, you, could, sense, you could sense them being like, we have a really good fucking movie here. Like, yeah. this is this is badass. And they, they got too greedy because they were like, we need to throw a giant twist in and make this shit legendary. Yeah. But they tried a little too hard and they and they fucked it up a little bit. Like, it is what it is. Like, I'm not going to go back. And that's what I was thinking about when we were talking about doing this review. It's like, you could spend a lot of time going back and being like, this is impossible because of this scene. This is my theory because of this scene. Okay, fucking Debbie Downer. The fucking, it's just too, it's just too much. I Never just, bring her out to fucking picnics. You know, I want to review it like I watch it. And when I watch it, I just go, it's a cool movie with a weird ending. And at this point, you've seen the detectives notice on the video footage camera that it's her Alex. that killed the gas station attendant with 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 the axe, and I think that's why that was a less brutal kill because they could make that believable. Because if you look back at the kills, it's one of those things you go, she's pretty, she looks pretty muscular, like she's in, she's in good shape, mm. but she could have done some of the shit. Well, yeah, you know, probably. I don't know. I mean, sometimes, yeah. If you like, again, there are a lot of elements like you have to suspend belief. Yeah. But there are some things I just I'm like, okay, but she was driving a fucking van, you know, because she was how does she. Was it all in her mind that she even had a car? Uh, like, I, this is, this is, now look, this is the M. Night Shalabam bomb that we're getting to. Uh, the twist is, yeah, like, you, like Mike said, Alex is the killer. She's always been the killer. And, you know, that's why uh, Michelle, I don't know, her, I can't remember her friend's name, is all scared and terrified of her. She's not understanding because she's obviously psychotic as fuck with split personality disorder. Um, she's not like, why are you so mad? Everything's going to be okay. Give me a hug. You want some tea? But she's not getting it. Now, was everything that was going on up to that point when she was following him in the car, was that just in her mind that she had stolen a car and this car didn't even exist? But then she wrecked the fucking car, so there was a physical car there. And not just that. Or at least in her own, but maybe in her brain pictures. <laughs> there were like a physical car and and, and, and and that's why it looked overturned and wrecked, but there really wasn't a and car. Not just that, but the killer, the gas station t 
the tenant knew who he was, and in his car he had pictures of other girls he'd done this to. Yeah. So it's like when you like, I, well, like yeah, that's a dark, that's a dark, I think, dark. I think, I think the problem is when you start uh, opening it up and trying to examining more parts of it like yeah. that, then it kind of loses its flavor. Yeah. But we're not gonna do that flavor, flav. So we're just gonna go with the fact that she was the killer the entire yeah, we'll time. Just, we'll take it. At, we'll take it for face yeah, value. And but we're acknowledging right now that a lot of that shit doesn't fucking. If make you, sense. Yeah. If you really are trying to go back and nitpick it, you're gonna find a lot of problems yeah. with that. After she uh, kills the killer, which she killed part of her brain, <laughs> uh, she unties her friend, or, and then she's not understanding or registering why her friend is so mad and upset with her and scared of her. And eventually, her friend slashes her across the fucking face and then stabs her in the gut. And then she runs away. And then all cool of a sudden, that they did that, by the way, because her friend sees her family die. Yeah, they, they oh yeah, they recap. It's they cool. recap the family's deaths. Because I would have stabbed that bitch too. Yeah, show everything that she had been doing. Do you fuck with the war? You don't fuck with the war. <laughs> <laughs> so then, after she stabs her friend Alex, Alex stands up, and then she's the killer again. And you know, it's pretty much uh, the dark half at that point, or um, secret window. It's kind of got the same vibe. And so they run, you know, she chases her. She actually gets a saw blade and goes after her. She flags down a, a, you know, a car. Good job for fucking getting him involved. He didn't want to be involved. Uh, and He's just trying to smoke his French cigarette and he does not know what's happening. And he smokes it like this. <laughs> I see crazy girls. You ask me to pull over, I say, really, I have croissants. Croissant? But you give me no croissant, you give me that. Oh, set the poupée. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, so anyway, uh, so she flags the guy down, she's sitting in the path, now this, wow. Alex runs out, fucking saw blades the motherfucker's guts, piece of glass, fuck. Fuck! I did the, I, I did the, uh, I did this, oh my god. I don't know what it is about, like, Achilles and just shit. They show the, the glass shard in her fucking Achilles. Fuck! It's deep. Yeah, it's nasty, too. They show it. I felt like, uh, <laughs> Doctor Strange uh, in, in Infinity War, you'll find <laughs> our resolve. <laughs> it's up, whatever. And I, I, I wanted to, like, pull out fucking chains of, like, the Eye of Agamotto just not to see this shit anymore. Because <laughs> I was doing, like, hand movements while I was happy. I was like, ah, shit, shit. It was just it's fucking gross, dude. When he kills the guy and goes through the, uh, the windshield, man, it fucks this dude's shit up, like, really fast. <laughs> like, this dude, like, they show his, like, you see him through- The power saw from Lowe's can cut through anything. Flesh, no <laughs> problem. <laughs> you, you see this dude's face afterwards, and it's just eyeballs on a fucking mutilated corpse, and he's just like, <laughs> All of a sudden, it's the girl again, it's Alex, and she leans down, starts this weird blood kiss with her, like, kissing, and there's, like, spit. Do you love me? Do you love me? But I'm not, I mean, the girl's like, yes, I fucking love you, yeah. just stop! And then they're, like, the they're, like, kissing, and there's this blood goo, and it's just fucking nasty. And then the girl finally gives in and she starts kissing her too. And I'm like, I'm slightly it's aroused. A, it's the least, what, no, it's the no, least no, sexual. I don't know. I don't know what was happening. I couldn't. I think it was just because I came from a dark place and I needed something. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I thought that too. I was like, they're going to make out. No, no, no. Why am I excited? I'm I, not I, was, I was like that. I was like, <laughs> because I, I, I was trying to process everything that I had seen. And then just there was a moment and I'm like, What's happening? And this is the most confusing boner I've ever had. Realized, but then I was like, just go with it. <laughs> but it's really fucked up because when she's sitting on top of her, and she's got that you know rod in her, <laughs> it's oh. not what she was asking oh. for, uh, in more ways than one. Um, dude, it was so weird though because she was like, nothing will ever tell us apart. You know what? Nothing will ever tell us apart. Really, the biggest plot hole of this whole goddamn movie, and really the grossest part of this whole goddamn movie, is that this bitch has been running around doing this shit in cream jeans the whole time because she was fucking masturbating when he showed up, and she came. And she didn't clean it or anything. That guy showed up at the door and she just pulled her fucking pants up and then ran around for an hour and a half movie with cream cheese. This is Earth. We go hot. That's gross. We go hot. Uh, but no, look, yeah, so, um... You gotta put a baby wipe I wonder, I, I would have... just imagine just that the whole dynamic of the movie would have changed and the whole thing would have been different is after as she stabbed her after they made out weird blood kiss. And it, the Alex girl leaned in. It's like, is it too late now to say sorry? <laughs> it's just, I just have Justin Bieber stuff. I come over it. But anyhow, <clears throat> you cut to the, what the very beginning of the movie was, where you showed the girl like with the staples and shit in her back and all these wounds on her, talking to somebody. You see Alex now in a psychiatric unit, and then she's sitting there and I was like, 
I'll never tell. I'll never t Whatever, you know, I know it's not what she says, but it's like, don't say a word. Then she turns around and I, I, it was just, she's like, <laughs> it's like, oh, give me a hot. <laughs> it was like, it's like, I need it. Like, I, I did, like, I'm not, okay, you know why I say I liked it. You know why I say it was unneeded? Because it scared me. <laughs> it fucking scared me. And I don't like bastards that do that because it was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, shit, you fucked up. That's what she was just like, don't have a tattoo spot. Don't have a tattoo spot. Don't have a tattoo spot. <laughs> Come and live among the flowers with the beautiful pixie sticks. That's how I hold my pizza when I'm on a diet. <laughs> don't have a tattoo spot. <laughs> so, dude, I give this movie a 9.5, though. I, 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 yeah, that's I a really it, mine's a 9, too. Movie. I give it a 9, so. It's definitely one of those movies that you gotta check out. If you like serial killer movies, if you like gore, if you like fantastical creatures that come and live among us on the flower. But if you can, don't pick apart the twist because it'll fuck you up. It could ruin the movie for you, possibly. As far as like start, like it felt so Halloween, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, all that shit. Such a good, well-made horror movie. Glade Pumper feels good. And uh, dude, Joshua Gray, that was a great fucking pick. I'm so glad. You oh, did I, I want to throw this out really fast. Uh, this is just a really little quick thing. I I read through. Um, I didn't know if you guys knew this. There was actually some controversy around this movie, not because it was so gory that people just were throwing up and having to go babies and shit like that in the middle of the theater. They were just popping babies out because it was so disturbing. So they were pregnant. Uh, Dean Koontz. Uh, there was a book called Intensity that Dean Koontz wrote. I heard And they this. said that the controversy was that it was pretty much the same fucking thing. And they, whoever was the, the director or the writer read the book adapted it to a screenplay and made a movie and Dean Koontz was like he he was like yeah it's plagiarism they stole my shit uh, and he was like but you know what uh, Kevin Marquez told me about that on Twitter yeah I wanted I, I'm not friends with Kevin on, on, on Twitter sorry I'm not on tweets uh, but I, I read it on Wikipedia but yeah it is Dean Koontz is uh, he said that he wasn't going to pursue any legal action because he thought it was so depraved and disgusting and I don't know if he was saying the movie was shit and he just thought it was like glorified violence for no reason or he was just like, I kind of enjoyed it, so I'm not really going to sue him. But I think he said, I think actually what he meant was, he's like, I don't want my name associated with it at all. So I'm just going to let it be. I'm not going to sue him and have it in, you know. So. Yeah, apparently they ripped off the Dean Koontz book really hard fucking. Which cool. I don't Dean who? <laughs> no, I know who he is, but still. It's kind of shitty if they did that. Yeah. But it was still, that was just a little uh, tidbit I wanted to throw out there. Totes my goats. Goats, yeah. Well, guys, if Numbers. you want to get on the Patreon, goodness, below, click that link. Uh, and Joshua Gray, thank you, dude. You're an awesome fucking dude. We really appreciate your support all this time. We love your all's fucking faces. And if you're new to the channel, click that subscribe button and get some goddamn wham opinion. I never tasted pot. You want some high tension? Subscribe. <laughs> we watched a movie. Yeah. We watched a movie. We watched a movie. Yeah. You know what? We did a review. We watched a movie. Uh huh. Mm. We watched a movie.